Hello everyone, it's Ants International, and today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to move your ant colonies. In this video, I'm going to try to explain to you guys how to move your ant colonies from all different sizes, from really small test tube colonies to really large massive colonies, like my trap drills. Speaking of my trap drill colony, I'm also going to be showing you guys at the end of this video how I move them into a huge setup. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. So I'm going to first start off this video by talking about how to move a test tube colony. I have a dual Fidole queen colony here, um, and they don't have any workers yet. So remember, you can move your test tube colonies when they have maybe 0 to 20 workers into a new test tube, or just an individual queen. So what you're going to need is some blue tech, a fresh test tube, of course, and something to cover up the new test tube. This could be a book, some newspaper, or just a little roll-up uh, piece of paper that I that I usually use. So if you're dealing with manitics, make sure you're really careful when you're pulling the cotton. This is a really inactive colony, so I don't really have to worry too much about um, them trying to escape. So just get a piece of blue tack and stick it underneath the old test tube, and then get the new test tube and attach that to the blue tack. Now once you've done this, get the um, rest of the blue tack and cover up the seal between the uh, test tubes. This is to make sure that none of the anitics or queens escape and then get the new um, or get the sorry the piece of paper and cover up the new test tube. Um, and also don't forget to poke a little hole with something. This could be a pen or a needle or whatever just to make sure that they're getting some oxygen and expose the old colony and the old test tube to light. Now usually what this will do will it will encourage the ants to move because ants really don't like heated or lighted climates. They like it when their nest is dark. So if your colony isn't moving, I left this colony in here for about two weeks and they still hadn't moved. What you're gonna wanna do is unplug the seal and make sure that of course there's no nanitics running around and reach in with some tweezers or anything and really gently pull out the cotton that the colony is nesting on. I did this over the course of about 15 minutes with this dual Fidole queen colony, making sure to try not disturb them that much. Of course, it's really hard, but only do this as a last resort. The mold in this colony was getting really bad and I was getting really nervous about the brood and the queens. So I had to take desperate precautions and move them. Keep in mind, you guys do have to wait about at most a week for the colony to move. It's all about patience, guys, when you're moving your ant colonies. Don't try to force them too much. Okay, so what I did was I got the old piece of cotton and just simply slid it on to the new piece and let them move in on their own schedule. So now I'm gonna teach you guys how to move a larger test tube colony with about 20 to 50 workers, just when you're getting ready to move them into a formicarium. Now, usually in with a formicarium, there will be a sort of tubing adapter. So what you can do is attach the tube uh, to the old test tube and secure it with some blue tack to make sure no nanitics escape and just heat up the test tube and keep the old formicarium covered with a book or something and the colony will move. The problem is, is sometimes, not all the time, will your formicarium have a tube adapter. So this is when you have to get a bit creative. I learned this tactic from Rob J's ants. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below to his channel, but he had this really smart tactic. What he did was he got a test tube uh, with the colony and covered it up with some sort of cloth or bubble wrap. He got a hammer and really gently smashed the water reservoir section of the colony. Um, so what this is gonna do is it's actually gonna expose the bit of cotton at the back. So what you can do is actually just pull the cotton at the back and just place the test tube and the cotton itself into the new nest and it works really well and I can just let them in and move them in on their own schedule without forcing them out. Now I'm going to teach you guys how to move really any size of colony. This is using the traditional method of moving your colonies with uh, anywhere from 50 to as many workers as your colony has. So this is a a friend of mine's yellow crazy ant colony. They got about 50 workers and they're nest is very big for them and this came with a couple of problems they were actually piling their garbage inside the nest really close to them and there was lots of bad mold growing so what i decided to do was attach some tubing to a new naturalistic setup for them to move into and like with the test tube setup i exposed the colony to light and heat this really got them aggravated and got them moving almost immediately um yeah, this was a really cool yellow crazy ant colony and they started moving into the tubing really quickly. 
Now you're probably wondering, um, how are they, how are they not escaping from this nest? Well, I actually use an ant barrier. Now these ant barriers, I have seen no videos on how to make them, so I got a, uh, some. Uh, some help from some of my friends in Singapore, some of the ant keepers here, and they helped me out by um, telling me how to make a barrier. Now what this barrier will do is it will make sure that the ants can't climb out and instead they'll just slip out. This is um, a baby powder and alcohol rubbing mix which I'll show you guys in a couple minutes, but I just want to show you guys what it usually looks like. So here is um, some rubbing alcohol, you can get this at the, uh, your local pharmacy and just dump it into the cup, get some baby powder and dump that into the cup, just um, squirt it in there and mix it around for a couple minutes until you get a consistency uh, which is a bit thick but also uh, wet enough to rub on the outsides of your nest. It should look something like this, there usually will not be any air bubbles because I mixed it really quickly so keep that in mind and you should and you should get a consistency similar to this. You can apply this um, with really anything, a paintbrush, a cotton ball, or cotton bud, anything really works. Just make sure that you're covering all sides of the nest. And don't forget to reapply this barrier every month or so because sometimes um, the, col uh, the barrier will actually wear out and the colony will eventually find a break or a weakness in the barrier. But yeah, once the brood and the queen start moving into the new nest, this symbolizes that the colony is really moving. So that's really all you need to wait for is the queen. If you're on a desperate schedule, then you can stop and unplug the tubing. If there's only a couple workers left in the old nest, don't worry about it. You can either just dump them into the new nest, or if it's nothing that much, you can just release them or do your very best to release them into the old nest. But yeah, um, yeah, it's a pretty cool move. And now I'm gonna show you guys how I moved my trap jaw colony. Now, as you all know, this trap jaw colony has around 700 workers and has a lot of elates, which I'll talk about later on in the video. But yeah, after their last population explosion, which I explained about in my trap jaw video, my trap jaw colony video, they had a lot of casualties and they were getting to their maximum amount of worker load before they had another population explosion. So one of the reasons that this happened was actually because they didn't have enough space. So my ridiculous plan was to move them into this huge glass tank full of soil and actually if you look to the right you might notice a little um, nest in their old setup. This is a Y-Tong nest, it's the same as the Campanotus nest, I actually moved the Campanotus colony um, out of their nest into a new naturalistic setup, uh, I might talk about that in a future update video. But what I did was I actually put this Y-Tong nest in there so I could see them while they were in their nest. And they moved in immediately. I think they quite liked the nest. Um, I left it in there for a day and they moved the bulk of the colony in there. And it was super cool. In fact, they were actually barricading the walls of the nest, which was kind of creative. But anyway, what we did was we did this because trap jaws actually can't climb up too big. Um, or at least this species, Odontomachus similis. Um, but they also can't climb up glass, which is really handy, so I don't have to worry about putting a barrier. So what I did was I simply clogged the nest entrance and just placed it into the new nest and got a piece of tubing sticking out of the hill once I moved the soil onto this nest. And that was their entrance. They only had one entrance into this large nest, which created a couple of problems. But other than that, the move was really it really worked out well and I only had to end up dumping in a couple of workers, I think about 10 or so, which was not that bad. You can see that I'm wearing gloves and that's because I was pretty scared of getting stung or bitten by these trap jaws. Um, but yeah, but something that was really cool was that I got to see a lot more natural behaviors from these trap jaws. Um, I got to see more pack hunting more solo hunting, which was really cool, and it just gave them a huge space to go exploring and adventuring. Now, the thing was that this colony before I moved them was jam-packed into that white tongue nest. There were workers just everywhere. Ever since I gave them the soil nest, they've expanded a lot and have dug multiple nest entrances all over the nest, and which is kind of cool because they've positioned actually the main brood in the white tongue nest, which was super cool. They have a lot of brood, like a lot which is the future generation of the colony. Now, I was talking to you guys a bit ago about the elates. Now this colony, I counted about 20 elates inside the nest when I was moving them. And this means that the colony is actually preparing for nuptial flight season. So for those of you guys in Asia, get ready, because I think trap jaw 
queens have already started flying, so if you want to find a trap draw, now's the time to look. In fact, it's a bit late into their season. But yeah, I really hope you guys can tr uh, catch a trap draw queen. They're pretty hard to raise, but if you do succeed, they're an awesome colony. And actually, here's a f um, queen that's lost its wings in the nest, wandering around, which was a bit odd. In fact, I actually saw a lot of these nest uh, queens coming out of the main hill. But I think really what just takes the cake on this formicarium is the white tongue part. You can see everything on the inside of the nest. Brood, eggs, larvae, pupae. It was really just amazing. I'm sorry I couldn't get very good shots now. I'm gonna try to get some good shots later for a future video. But overall, I'm really proud of this nest with the large pieces of driftwood, the walnut shell that I preserved from the last nest. I think it really just looks nice and amazing. So that's really it for today's video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed, but before I end the video, I just wanted to make another huge apology for not uploading lately. Um, it's because, once again, I've been really busy with schoolwork, and I've actually been in contact with a couple um, really cool ant keepers who have actually sent me some formicariums to review on this channel, which I can't wait to show you guys because they are really, really cool. I think you guys are really going to like them, and I really hope you can check them out in our next uh, upcoming videos. So as usual, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. The support always is just amazing. And don't forget, if you have any questions, don't forget to contact us at bigheadedants at gmail.com. Uh, or just leave a comment in the comment section below. And we finally have an Instagram account, so please go and follow us at ants underscore international. We're gonna post some really cool ant pictures and maybe do a couple live streams of our colonies. And hey, if you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I can't wait to see you guys in the next one. Bye.